Hello, everyone, and welcome to Product Schools. To today's event is so exciting. It is a women in tech panel discussion. We'll be chatting with two product management leaders about their experience working in technology. Hopefully, they'll share some experiences that they've had, any challenges, and maybe you'll get some tips and advice from them as well. I am today's panel moderator, Karen Longbreak. I'm a product management director at the Walt Disney Company. I'm gonna hand it over to Judy to introduce herself. Hi everyone, um, I'm Judy. I'm a group product manager at Snap. I lead ad delivery and marketplace team here. Thanks Judy and Christine, over to you. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Christine. I'm actually based in London. I'm currently a product manager in Monzo. Um, I've done a few short stints in Asia and I come from like a user research and designer background and that's sort of how I transitioned into product. Maybe a little bit unconventional, um, but that's a little fun fact about me. Great. Thank you, Judy and Christine. And Christine, my uh, my product management entry is definitely unconventional as well. So uh, I entered into product management by way of business analysis, which I know is pretty popular as well. So I've been in, in tech for a little while, but just recently in, in product management. Um, All right. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Um, just re remember this is a panel so the panelists views are their own and don't necessarily represent the company um, also if you have any questions or comments please post those in the chat and we'll try to get to them as time allows i am going to kick off today's panel with what may seem like a very obvious question uh, why is it important to encourage women to pursue careers in technology and I'll leave it open to either Christine or Judy to answer first. I I can yeah I can take a stab first. So um, as we all know, like the the tech industry itself is a growing sector, and it will be a matter of fact. I think it was like sixth like biggest like um, industry um, back in like twenty twenty one data. But I think it's a matter of fact, like, you know, that it will even like climb up like in the rank um, by by the time goes. And, you know, like all the, the innovation is happening in this like sector, too. And I think like it is like really important for women and like um, who will be considered as like minorities to have the seat at the table um, so that it can actually we can influence like the, the future that we are building and we'll be in together so that that can be, you know, like um, that can be handed over to like the, the generations like um, below us as well. So I think like because like we're in this like crucial point of like having a leap in this like whole like AI technology and its application as well. Um, it will be really great to have like our voice heard um, where we are actually at this point of like setting what the, the future will look like and the strategies that will be built accordingly. Yeah. I love that Judy. Christine, yeah. Yeah, I um I, I agree with everything that Judy said. Um I guess for me I, I think the importance of having a diverse workforce is it effectively is a catalyst for innovation. Um being in tech, especially um wearing the hat of a product manager, we're often sort of confronted with uh, complex problems um, and having like a diverse group in, in a way would allow us to be more comprehensive and creative when we're problem solving. Um, so I think that's probably one of the key reasons why I would say it's important. Um, secondly, I also think um, it continues to nurture like a growing community um, so that like future generations, like Judy has mentioned, can continue to be inspired um, and feel supported. Um, within like a, a community of um, female leaders. I love that. And I think, you know, we are following leaders that that blaze the path for us. So I think it's important for us to carry that torch as well. I also truly believe that, um, and I think Judy, you mentioned this as well, that we need to reflect our uh, our customers, our our guests in my, in my situation. Um, you know, if we can better reflect kind of the user base of our products, whatever our product is, I think we we can be more creative 
and really be able to innovate better for sure. So thank you for sharing those wonderful thoughts. Uh, we're, we're getting some great questions in the chat already. I'm gonna hold on going to those for a moment. Um, just so we have a few prepared questions that I'll, that I'll walk through. Um, and I think I'll, I'll bounce this one over to Judy again. As a product manager, how do you feel is the best way to influence without authority? Um, yeah, so this like has been, um, I don't know, like um, the, the motto that like I'm sharing with like um, my team as well as like my colleagues too, because like, um, especially a product manager, you don't have to be a people manager to have like influence, like in like setting up like a, a developing new products or setting up like roadmap or strategy. So I think it's like really important that you become the face of the the area that um, that you own and drive. And um, I think the 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 number one way to do, do it is to build trust and instill the trust like with your working group. So um, you you like people can trust you that oh you like Judy is an expert in this like uh, this area of X Y Z. So that I think that's a reflection of that okay like um, I can actually um, drive the future of this area without authority. And I think that's like being built like with like the the all the knowledge that you're putting together and then um you know like actually uh driving the great relationships like across uh, the all the cross-functional teams that you're driving but i think like at the end of the day that you have to have the the ownership mindset as well that okay like any kind of like problems or escalations or inbound or outbound requests that are being made that I should know like ins and outs. And of course no one is perfect and there can be some gaps like here and there, then just like, you know, admit it that, oh, like I wasn't aware of this, but let's get bottom to this and then uh, bottom of this. And then what are the problems that we are seeing? And just like, don't afraid to ask questions, like even like in those cases and then just like focus on the fact that, okay, like I'm the owner um, and I have to like, you know, like uh, fill in the, the knowledge gap that I might have. But I think eventually that will set like um, the path like for uh, forward, like to be a healthier relationship with the group that you're working with. I love that when you said I'm the owner, but I don't have to know it all, right? Um, and almost, it's almost better if you don't, right? If you come in um, to a role or to a project inquisitive, asking questions, trying to learn from the people who may be the experts as well. Christine, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on influencing without authority. Uh, no, I think Judy covered very similar points that I, I had in mind as well. I think having and building strong relationships that are based off trust is very, very important and key. Um, I think it also goes both ways in the sense that when I sort of work with my team and work with my leadership team, um, I try to sort of lead and act by example in like it, how I want to be treated is like the same way that I would treat others. And so um, just also empowering other people to feel like I trust them um, and like we're, we're in this journey together. I think that helps with uh, less like influencing, but maybe like inspiring collaborating together on like a, a mission and vision that ideally you share because you're in the same team and in the same company um but yeah a lot of that is rooted in having strong trust and relationship i love that idea of the trust and the relationship and that really being the foundation of product management and building a great product right um you know, seeing some really cool things in the chat as well, communicating with empathy. Um, I agree that's incredibly important and trying to embody that end user, that, uh, that product user. So thank you so much for those wonderful thoughts. I'm gonna shift gears for a moment. Um, you know, we're, we're out of the pandemic. <laughs> Um, and, but a lot of us kind of had a shift in our working environment during that time um, and either went into a completely remote work situation or, um, you know, now work on a, as part of a distributed team. 
And so I would love to hear a little bit about some of the challenges that you've encountered as part of a maybe a distributed team or um, working remotely. And then also just on the counter side of that, how has that been a really good opportunity for you as a, as a product manager or just as a leader in general? I'm I'll happy. open it up to either one. Oh, Christine, yeah. go for it. I'm happy to go for this one first. Um, so sure. for me, I think uh, there are two challenges that I've personally experienced, but I kind of see the other end of it. Like I could flip the coin around and sort of see the benefit that having having the situation or being in that situation has brought up. Um, so I'll share a little bit around that. Um, the first thing for me is... Um, definitely work-life balance. Um, I think it's harder uh, working remotely um, to establish clearer boundaries when you're working from home, even like physical boundaries. Um, some of us not do not have the luxury of having, you know, gigantic homes or huge separators. So um, mentally and physically actually setting that boundary becomes more challenging. Um, whereas in the past, you could just leave the house and go to the office. Um, so I struggled with that quite a bit in the beginning, especially I live in London, we have like relatively smaller flats. Um, so what I do try to do is still try to carve out a space in the living room, which is like far away as far as I can from the bedroom. Um, and I sort of just put the mental model that when I'm here that I'm working, but if I'm not in this corner of the living room, I'm not. Um, so, and I, and I sort of be quite strict with myself on that. Um, and something else I think I, I start to do more of um, is also to book in classes, like workout classes, yoga classes. Um, at times you regularly would, um, if you were working in the office, let's say appointments at six. Um, I think that gives you a bit of like a forcing factor to really get off the seat. Because um, otherwise I, I feel like sometimes I could just run into the night without even realizing. Um, so that's a, definitely a challenge. But if you flip it around, I think we can see this as a good thing as well, because now working from home, we get more flexibility. Um, to manage our own time and perhaps to maybe stagger things in our day-to-day -day, um, in ways that pre-pandemic when we worked in the office, we couldn't. Um, so yeah, I think there's like plus and minuses on both. Um, and then the other thing I think that I was struggling with, and I still am, is uh, visibility. So I think um, working remotely, it's a lot harder to uh, feel like you're gaining recognition and getting visibility um, from the company or from your team. Um, I I tend to struggle with, with this because I don't I don't think I, I shout about things as much um, on Slack or online um, when things are completed or their accomplishments. So I'm trying to be more proactive about that. Uh, but something else. Um, myself and I got the team to start trialing it out as well is to actually make time at the end of projects, especially big ones, to ask for feedback um, so that at the end of it, um, you can make sure you're still getting feedback from peers, stakeholders and leadership as a way to help you grow, but also to like gain visibility through that way as well. Um, so, yeah, again, you can get some things out of that, uh, but obviously there's also the challenge. I love that, a personal after action review. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I agree with like um, the, the two points that Christina um, mentioned, but I think I have like two other um, challenges that I've like noticed. The first one is um, I think regarding a lot of companies like now mandate like return to office like for X amount of days. And with that, um, I have like, you know, a, a flexible work from home option, um, fortunately, but like sometimes, you know, like I feel like if I dial in and not physically be in the room while like some of the folks like who are in the office are in like the same meeting room for uh, especially like high stake meetings or discussions, then even though like I raise my hand like virtually to wave um, in the queue to speak up, it's just like it's very natural that like people like physically like who are in the room actually you know like jumps in and like takes over the queue so it's just like really hard to you know like um just like uh, make the make like visibility and then like speak up and also you know like bring in the ideas like at the same level as like people like who are there all together so i'm trying to you know like i actually am fortunate to have like also like 
the other option where if I like want to go into the office, like it's not too far away and I can make that trip. Um, so like, you know, I'm prioritizing like the really important meetings where it would benefit like me and my team, where I would have a physical like attendance and representation. And like for those day, I try to like go in so that I can physically like attend uh, versus, you know, like um, the other meetings where I can um, join remotely. I try to categorize them differently, but it requires like, you know, a lot of balancing there too, uh, because like we all have that work and life balance, like struggle goals like in this like um, in this stage as well and uh, my second um, like challenge will be you know going back to like building trust like instilling trust and building relationship with um, your cross-functional teams um, it's really hard like when the teams are all distributed and then um, like when we just like you know like go into a meeting we have like a very small talk like for a minute or two about whether or you know like our weekends very briefly but we don't have that hallway conversation we used to have like when everyone was working in the office and you know you actually get to know that person like better very naturally by like having breaks together or having lunch together you know without like meeting rooms uh, but like that's not happening so it's not a perfect solution, but like, you know, some of our teams are trying to have um, like monthly social and block our calendars for 30 minutes and, uh, and an hour and then not talk about work, period. Um, and then we can actually talk about like other stuff. And that has been very refreshing. Um, and then, you know, like you get to learn a lot um, of the other aspects of like the coworkers that you're seeing every day. So that have been, um, it's like, a, have been like a much better, you know, like bonding experience that not having it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of really great suggestions in the chat as well. Um, you know, lessons learned, doing demos at the end of a project um, to really keep people engaged. And then also, you know, for your coworkers and making sure that you're, you have that presence, having a remote presence is, is something or a virtual presence is something that is um, recommended as well. Have, have check-ins. I know at the beginning of the pandemic, we had kind of virtual happy hours that we would do as a team. And I find that I do that now, not in larger groups, but in much smaller groups, just kind of check-ins with people, with groups of folks to see how everyone's doing, to make sure that we do keep that personal connection going and that social aspect and not just uh, concentrate on work all of the time. So um, I'm gonna have one more question and then I'm gonna go over to the chat um, real quickly. So. I, I really think that, um, you know, being a woman in tech, sometimes you do feel like you're the only one. <laughs> um, and I've been in several rooms where I am the only woman. Um, and, you know, it, it happens quite constantly that I, I don't even necessarily recognize that anymore. But I think being in that situation, it's important to have a mentor or a supporter, someone that understands the position that you're in. Um, so Judy and Christine, do you have a mentor or a supporter, someone that is on your side and maybe um, when you're in situations that uh, are uncomfortable or where you don't really know how to move forward that maybe can help you in that situation? I can take this one. Um, I think I learned um, through my experience that, as like um, Karen mentioned, that like because you know, oftentimes like we're the the only women in many meetings, and then like we don't have like proper uh, representation um, or you know like voice like um, when there is like a huge like decision to make. I quickly learned, okay, it's like really, especially if you work like in a pretty sizable company, it's really important to find a right mentor and supporter so that like you can actually, you know, like bring in the questions that you might have 
um, like in, in terms of like career development advancement, or if you're stuck in a situation um, and who someone like who can actually provide some insights like with their um, seasoned experience. So um, I like um, had a pretty like fortunate experience at my previous company where, you know, like my skip manager, um, it's like really important to have like some like one-on-one moments, like even with your skip manager. So that's why I like, I try to like build relationship with my skip and how I actually approach, um, approach and build this relationship was that, okay, like if you have like some, you know, like ideas or discussion topics, um, about work, like it's like a, an easy way to start the conversation and then have that discussion and then, you know, like mix it with like some kind of like personal like questions as well, like in terms of career. And then like while having that question, just like suggest like if we can do a recurring meeting like this, but not like too aggressive where it's like, you know, asking for weekly meetings, but maybe like monthly or um, every other month so that you can have it in calendar. So then, you know, you don't have to make an extra effort to maintain um, that relationship like consciously, but like because you have it in your calendar as well as his or hers, that it's going to be, you know, like sustain in that way and then but it's really important that you actually think through what are the the questions or topics that you want to discuss with this person so so that that like the other big like mentor or supporter will find this time valuable and um uh, and like very rewarding as well so i tried that approach um i found a really great mentor in my previous company company and um because like she was also women uh, who used to be in a similar situation she really um provided a lot of like meaningful and valuable guidance like uh, some of the very tricky situations that i actually ended up being in and she was like able to understand why where i was coming from and what i'm trying to achieve um and i'm like still like keeping like a really great relationship with her um so i think like that was a, a that was a great example and I, I, I actually did the same, like took the same model to my current company and then um, like started to find my mentor and supporter and have like a, a recurring meeting with, um, with my, my, I think like mentor slash supporter right now. That's really great. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I think my my experience, my journey um, of finding a, a supporter slash mentor is also very similar um, to what you mentioned, Judy, and also the ways of maintaining the relationship is also very, very similar. Um, so I, I think I first started off with identifying individuals within the company um, whose experiences is and insights I admired. Either it was the way they present themselves or it was like a maybe a, a skill set that they had or it was a way that they thought about problems or the way they break down things. Um, I just like identify these people that I really wish to, to learn from um, and then try to see if there's like a natural and casual way of um, sort of getting to know them. Um, Sometimes it could also just be luck. I think in one instance, I hadn't even joined my current company yet. And um, she was actually starting in the same day as me and we were onboarding buddies and we're joining the same team. And so I think tying back to what Judy mentioned about having very, being in very similar situations and maybe coming from very similar backgrounds, you, you just tend to be, like easily connect. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that to me was how I started um, building this like close circle of um, supporters um, who I know I'm very blessed um, to have. And then I think keeping the relationship going, I also have regular uh, meetings put in the calendar. Sometimes if one of us are busy, we'll just cancel it. Um, but it's just good knowing that it's there. Um, and uh, sometimes it's something that we look forward to. So um, I definitely um, not shy away from putting in regular meetings. Um, of course, like first build um, the relationship first. Um, but uh, yeah, as soon as like there's a little bit of foundation, I'd say um, put that in. Um, and then the worst case is you could delete it. I personally have fortnightlies um, with uh, the two or three um, close supporters and mentors that I have. Um, so uh, yeah, I think sometimes you're just looking for advice. Sometimes you're even looking for constructive feedback. Um, 
or just simply someone you want to, to lift you up. So um, it, it could be used for several reasons. At least I have been using that. And I try to do both ways as well. Um, so uh, yeah, sometimes maybe they need a little bit of a lift. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a two-way stream. I'm glad you mentioned that, Christine, because I think it is important to not only seek mentorship, but to also become a mentor to other people, whether it's it's women in tech um, within your company, outside of your company. I know I'm seeing in the chat, you know, what what happens if, if I truly am the only woman um, in, in tech in, in the entire company? My advice, reach externally. I mean, you have all of these great resources within product school on LinkedIn. Um, you know, we're certainly all there to support you because I think, you know, even if we don't know you, we want you to be successful. And so, um, you know, I think there are definitely avenues to find mentorship outside of your current company if, if you can't find any within. And really I great discussion. Say, I love this talk. <laughs> and can I add one Sorry, more Jean. thing? So, yes, yes please. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you, Karen, on, you know, like find mentors like outside of your group, because, you know, like it's really it's not easy to find like women mentor like within the company. I admit that, especially if you're in the tech industry. But in terms of supporter, there is a great article. I think um, I'm blinking where I saw it, but the difference like between like supporter and mentor and that has been very helpful. So like supporter is someone who can like actually have have like influence, like direct influence in your career growth. Um, so I think like on that end, like it's important to like build like that relationship with your like leader um, directly or your skip manager. Um, and like for that case, like I, I don't think it has to be women or it has to be someone like who has the same background or experience, but it must be someone like who can actually help um, grow your career. So that's a distinguishment. And then I think like mentorship or finding mentor, it can definitely, you know, like happen outside of like your own company or your like core group where you can actually get advice on something that's not like directly related to your own company or our own team, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for that distinction. I think that's really important. Okay. I'm going to shift gears again and take a question from the chat. Um, so this question is, how do you ensure that work, work gets done on time by your team members and is also good quality? So, you know, we got to meet, meet two, of, two sides of the triangle, the quality and, and the time part of it. Um, I know those are hard things to balance. You know, hopefully you have unlimited money, so you don't have to worry about that. But any advice that you have on, on that note? Um, I and maybe this is not, with remote workers too, right? Like how do, how are you measuring the quality of their work? Sorry, Judy, go ahead. Um, I think measuring part, um, it's, um, I think it's definitely harder with like remote work setting, but between like how, like which, like, you know, want to prioritize like between like speed versus quality. It's like, um, you know, like a continuous like problem for every product development, but I think like it's, um, it's different from product to product. So I think like um, you have to have a really clear understanding of like what the goal is and what are the, the key metrics that you're trying to move. So for example, um, I'm working on like monetization products and like, as, like because I work at a public company, sometimes like we have like some business goals that we want to achieve like within a quarter. And um, if it's like time crunched, then sometimes you know like I have to pro, uh, prioritize like urgency and then like probably re reduce like scope like to you know like very minimal viable product. And then you know like um, categorize like what can be uh, a fast follow or what can be you know like the 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 later version that we can add like after we ship like MVP um, versus like if it's a really foundational product that I'm building that takes like multiple quarters then quality might be more important factor than like you know us like delivering product like few weeks earlier or a few months earlier so I think it depends on the scope of the work as well as like uh, the 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 metrics that we're trying trying to hit and the objectives of each initiative. Yeah, I um if I if I jump in a little bit on here as well, I completely um 
agree with everything um, that Judy said, which was nodding along. Um, I guess maybe it's a question back um, to the floor in the sense that I'm curious to know where the timeline has perhaps come from. Um, is this maybe like a, like a timeline that you had originally proposed and then now is running behind of, or is it one that's been imposing you? Because I think that, that also would change the approach a little bit um, on whether it's uh, something you can do to cut scope or that, or whether it is actually uh, maybe doing like better estimations or adding multipliers to the estimations um, afterwards, once you know the team a little bit better and um, figured out like um, what those coefficients are. So I think also getting to the problem of why it's, um, why we're running behind or running short on time could also help. Absolutely, knowing those variables, for sure. Um, okay, I think we have one other question that now I'm looking for in the chat. All right. Um, oh, yes, and Michelle brought up the RICE method um, along with business needs and compliance. So, um, so I think one of the questions was, how do you, how do you prioritize work across you know a, a, a bunch of different stakeholders that maybe do not agree there it is <laughs> thank you so much i i know i have a comment on this one so um, this happens quite consistently <laughs> with with my work um because and i don't think it's necessarily disagreement i think it's more of competing priorities right are we trying to drive drive revenue are we looking to enhance maybe a guest experience or or a cast experience um I'm at disney i gotta use my uh, my terms here um, and I think I think sometimes we just have different different perspectives, and we've we've found that creating a matrix to prioritize work across multiple different um, realms really helps out a lot. So once again, you know, is this going to drive revenue? Is this going to make a process more efficient? Is this going to increase customer satisfaction? And I think those are kind of the three main pillars that that we look at um to and and then you kind of can weigh each one of those because i think you know in in some areas um customer satisfaction may be more important or in some other areas driving revenue is more important and so i think if you look at it kind of in a technical way i mean i love spreadsheets and any opportunity i can um <laughs> i can take to to use a spreadsheet to kind of back up my my thoughts and and um you know the the way that I go about work is is always helpful. So um, that's that's kind of how we do it. And then of course, you know, I think there's there's discussion that needs to happen with the right parties. You know, making sure that you have the right individuals in the room talking about it, weighing pros and cons um, of moving forward with certain features or certain initiatives. Um, Judy and Christine, I don't know if you have any closing thoughts on that one. Yeah, um, so I think um, I agree that it would come down to actually like a prioritization exercise. And then uh, if you have like your own thoughts, like that doesn't necessarily align with other groups, I will actually bring up that question. So like, you know, let's say that if we have done like OKR planning and if we have like said like um, like KRs that we want to hit and if like the, the new added like request is not like aligned with um, with like our KR path, then I'll bring it up to the table. OK, like this is like, um, you know, what we're, we're going to drop, like if we add this work. Um, so do we all agree that this is the right uh, decision to make? Um, like here are my thoughts, like this is like how I think, uh, but just like be open minded and get like, you know, like other people's like feedback, why like the other people think like this work, like should be prioritized like over the others. And I think like usually if you have that kind of conversation, then you get to understand where the other parties are coming from and then be able to adjust like your own like uh, prior, uh, prioritization list as well. 
Yeah, I think I, I second um, everything that was mentioned as well. I, I think this ties a little bit back to the original question or one of the earlier questions where we're talking about how to influence or make decisions without authority. And um, I think it comes down to effective collaboration, which usually would just mean you have to share your thoughts in a very well articulated way and have a strong reason to believe why this thing should be prioritized or why this should be true. Um, and I, I definitely do the same as what Judy does, like have a anchor, which to me usually is the uh, KR or the KPI um, and make it really clear that like, this is why I don't think it is, or this is a trade-off. Like, I don't think it fits into this uh, strategy or this uh, value tree. Um, and this is a trade-off. Like I will be taking this, which I think is a more impactful thing off the plate to prioritize this and just like making that clear and understandable for others, uh, but also trying like be an active listener of why they might be pushing it and what agenda they might be driving and um, maybe it's something that ladders up at a collective or like, oh, sorry, not collective, I'm using company terms, a company level. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's um, being able to listen, but also being able to articulate your points um, well as well wonderful and i know i could probably continue to moderate this panel for the next hour but we have run out of time christine judy thank you so much for all of the wonderful uh thoughts and and experiences that you've shared with us today thank you to all of the participants and um, all the great comments and questions that we've received as well i hope everyone has a great weekend and thanks for joining thank you everyone Thank you.